Hello, beta testers. Uh, I realized that I've had this FCU out on the market for quite a few weeks, and I still have not uploaded a dedicated um, programming video for it. So the first thing that you notice is that some of these trigger boards have more switches than others, or more connectors than others. That's because these ones are Polar Star compatible, and these ones are designed to be as cost effective as possible. Uh, our wires actually split off, and so we don't need either of those connectors because of the way that our FCU is designed. But if you want to use our trigger boards with Polar Star electronics, you can. You just have to get these additional connectors put on them. We have two different wire harness lengths, uh, short, which the FCU is in the grip, and long, which has the FCU in the stock. Uh, this is our V3 trigger board. This is our V2 trigger board. Um, right now, those are only two options, but we're looking to add more soon. Um, going over programming, what you're going to want to do is first understand, I guess, how it works. Uh, you have your trigger, you have your selector, which does nothing unless you pull the trigger, um, and you have your two adjustment potentiometers. There is the IC2 down here, which was supposed to be labeled as Dwell, and that'll be fixed in the full production run, but for beta testers, you're getting one that says IC2, because I needed to, you know, make them fast and not worry about just a simple printing error. Anyway, that adjusts how long your engine turns on for every shot. The other one, the delay, adjusts how long your engine turns off after every shot. Sometimes you want it to be a high number or a, a high delay because you need more time for the nozzle to retract or you want a lower rate of fire. Either of them work. Um, ideally, what you want to do is adjust your dwell to be as low as possible and your delay to be either as fast as your gun will feed or as fast as you want it to shoot or I guess the slowest would be if your field has weird limits. Uh, for programming, Right now, I have it set to semi-auto only, which means if you pull the trigger, it fires semi-auto, and if you hold the selector and then pull the trigger, it also fires semi-auto. Um, let's enter full auto. What I'm going to do is I'm going to hold the trigger for at least three seconds, uh, and then what I'm going to do is switch the selector from safe into full auto for one, two, and that's three seconds. Um, now I should be in full auto. So if I want to enter burst, I do the same exact thing. I hold the trigger for at least three seconds to enter programming, and then I hold the selector for one, two, three, four, five seconds, release the trigger. Now it's three round burst, and if I do the same exact thing for one, two, three seconds at least, and then if I hold it for one, two, six, seven, so now every time you pull the trigger, it fires, and every time you release the trigger, it fires. So that's a really cool bonus feature that we added to the FCU that most FCUs don't have. Uh, and then for semi-locking, what you have to do is hold the trigger for three seconds, and then you hold the selector for nine seconds, and at the end of those nine seconds, again, you release the trigger, exactly like you do with every other programming method. And now it is semi-auto only, even while you're holding the fire selector. So the easiest way that I can think to remember it is the most shots per trigger pull is the shortest amount of time that you hold the selector switch. So three seconds for full auto, five seconds for three round burst, uh, seven seconds for two shots with binary, and nine seconds for one shot with semi-locking. Um, that's the easiest way that I can think to remember it, and that is essentially how you tune the FCU and program it for different fire modes.